Gdy jesteśmy w księgarni Miejscownik, spotykamy się z powodu premiery Twojej najnowszej książki Genesis. Czy zaryzykowałbyś takie twierdzenie, że jest to Twoja najmroczniejsza książka do tej pory? Um, yes, for by, by a mile is the darkest book. I think I, I mentioned that when I, during the lockdown, there was um, nobody could travel, so we did a lot of um, over zooming interviews or whatever they were using a lot of. And I did an interview and I said to to a lot of people say, well, this, the, the next book is, is very dark and very brutal. And everybody was like, yeah, but all your books are dark and brutal. I was like, yeah, well, wait. And then when this book came out, a lot of people were like, yes, okay, I can see it's very dark. Um, so yeah, it was, it's um, compared to the other ones. It's like I said, all the other ones are also very, there's a lot of brutality and everything. But this one, because of the, my frame of mind during, during the time of, of writing the book and because of the lockdown, because the lockdown was a, very difficult time for everybody you know it was a lot of uncertainty nobody knew what was happening all of that filtering to the book when i was writing because i was writing the book throughout the lockdown so all of that ended up getting into the book so and there's a lot of emotion as well from from my side to me is a very emotional book so all that gets felt into the book the darkness the emotion of the pain so yeah it's definitely the the darkest one i've written czytając tę książkę miałem wrażenie że w niej jest też sporo twojego takiego prywatnego bólu z powodu tego co stało się w twoim prywatnym życiu gdy straciłeś swoją dziewczynę czy to, czy to czy to prawda yes yes um uh, the book was never supposed to be written. Um, there are a lot of things in the book that came from me, and it was my kind of pain. And, and I, um, yeah, it, it's expressed on Hunter, it's expressed in some of the other characters. Like, there's several things um, that people don't really know. Like, in, there's a poem in the book that the killer uses the poem. That poem was actually, I wrote it for my, my partner after she passed. So, that is part of my own thing as well. I just. I don't know, I decided to use it in the, in the book. But yeah, um, when I express how certain things in the book, I'm not going to reveal a lot, but how certain things in the book can have a, a what's called a butterfly effect. You know, it's like it, it affects another person, that affects another person, that affects another person. All that comes from what happened to me and how that completely affected my life and, and all, of, all of my friends and everything and how it, it changed the, the person I, I, was, I used to be. So yes, for sure there's a lot of a lot of my own pain in the book, yeah. W jaki sposób uh, odróżnić samobójstwo od morderstwa? Sometimes it can be difficult, but but it's just especially in America. Um it's uh, there's a lot of work. All the, the all the detectives are overworked all the time. They they have too much um, crime going on. So if there is a certain um, death like a suicide, which is pretty evident what happened unless there is a very, very clear um, show of foul play, which is called foul play, they won't investigate. You know, I mean, detectives not even called for, for, for a suicide case. They, uh, the, the police comes in just because they need a, a, a report. Um, and it's obligatory by law for you to have an autopsy um, on, on a suicide case. It's simply because a lot of people that commit suicide, they are under the influence of drugs and everything like that, um, which is understandable. You know, you, you're going you're gonna to do something that's completely final, um, and people will, they will definitely try to numb their brain, either with alcohol. It's like if you're in a bar and you see a, an attractive girl and you want to talk to her and you're a little bit nervous, a lot of people drink a little bit because it just like releases and then you go, you're going to do something about like ending your life. It's, it's very difficult for you to do that without trying to numb your body somehow. So a lot of people, they would drink a lot and they would do drugs and then, so uh, autopsy is necessary. But to completely identify from, from a suicide, um, to uh, if it's a murder is it, it can be, be very very difficult um depending on what type of suicide it is you know somebody can throw somebody from a bridge and pretend that the person jumped from the bridge how can they identify the person hits the floor when he hits the floor the bones break and everything unless um which is a funny <laughs> funny question that you ask because the next book the one i'm um, writing talks about that it, it, it actually works with the the going over the bridging in between a suicide and a murder it goes that thin line it talks about that actually the book um talks about it quite a lot so um it's not an easy thing to do unless 
um, like I said, because the, the, the autopsies are necessary, obligatory, they might find something on the autopsy, they go, oh, hold on, this is odd, this is different, which is pretty much what happens in the, the next book. Um, something is discovered from an autopsy that they go, this cannot have been suicide because of something that they found after. So, but it's not an easy thing to find, no. Suicide can be, it's still suicide, but pushed by another person. Like with bullying, you know, it's, I'm, actually to, to be true for most of the, the young people, um, which unfortunately is something that happens a lot, you know, a lot of younger people are ending their lives. They, they don't have enough life experience to think my life is, is not worth it anymore. It's like you haven't even started working. You haven't even met somebody to fall in love with. And you haven't had kids yet. You haven't started a family. You haven't started a business. So the reason why they do it is because they are pushed by other people, like other students in schools or stuff like that, or by their parents. Sometimes their parents are abusive. Um, but they just don't see a way out of it. So they end their lives, which is it's just sad. But um, in that case, it's not really because they they struggle with a with a depression or something like that. It's just because they are tired of being pushed around. So uh, the thing about leaving a note is 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 the easiest thing for for a killer to do. It's like if you do a suicide and then you leave a note. You only leave a note explaining why you do it, and then the police are, straight away, if they identify, especially if the note is handwritten, if they identify the, the handwriting as being from the person who committed suicide, then they go, okay, it's his, it's his handwriting, he wrote this note, he killed himself, they don't even investigate anymore, so, yeah, it's one, it's one of those things. Jest to też, a może przede wszystkim książka o problemach psychicznych. Tutaj w polskim wydaniu na końcu są numery telefonów dla osób, które potrzebują pomocy w związku z tym. Yeah, in in, in England we do we do the same. Um, when I talk to to the uh, the editors and stuff, um, so there's a warning right at the beginning of the book that just says, you know, this book deals with with certain topics which are it can affect people very closely because there are three topics that talks that the, the Genesis talk about which I'm not going to review but it is very hard nowadays for you to find a person who has not been affected for by at least one of those three you know because it happens all the time unfortunately it happens all the time so it has um, the, the phone numbers for a lot of helplines but the funny thing as well is that so there's a dedication in the, in the beginning of the book which I wrote just to it was my way of, of uh, trying to tell people that there, there are ways, ways out. And uh, because I was explaining this yesterday on the interview, um, a lot of people who commit suicide, they don't want to commit suicide. They want to they, they wanna live, they want to carry on. But they have lost hope. So they are looking for hope. And that hope can be can come in the in the shape of anything. It can come in the shape of a, some words it can, of a poem. It could come in the shape of a story. They read a story and that gives them hope to carry on. It can come in the shape of a person. They meet a new person and that person gives them hope to carry on. But they're looking for hope. They all are. They, you know, they're trying to find something. They're going to make them not want to end their lives. And. Um, I actually received several, I actually saved some on, on my phone, um, messages from, from readers. Uh, there was one that shook me and she said, hi, my name is so-and-so. She said, I am a 16-year-old girl. And she said, I was about to kill myself. And she said, and I didn't because of your book. She said, I read your book, or I read your thing, she said, and you stopped me. And she said, so I just wanted to let you know that I pretty much owe you my life. Which to me is like I was shivering when I read that. So it's, it's things like this, you know, you read, um, like I said, they are looking for hope. And that hope could be a poem, could be a story, it could be a person, could be anything. It could be a different city. So uh, that is why um, we, we added all the numbers as well. And actually funny, unfortunately, only Poland was the other country there added numbers. Um, in some countries, oh, I said that yesterday, actually really upset me very much. Um, Denmark didn't even put the dedication. They left the, left the dedication out. <laughs> and I was like, what? Um, so it's, it does help. 
you know, is those those helplines are there for a reason. Those those charities are there for a reason. Um, so I'm very grateful that that Sonia Draga did and uh, added the, the numbers here as well. That was that was very very nice of them. To, co powiedziała ci ta dziewczyna, to chyba najlepsza rzecz, jaką pisarz może w ogóle usłyszeć kiedykolwiek. Yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, I've, I've received some other ones from from other books, um, not about a specific book, but saying your books have helped me get through a very dark period in my life. You know, I said your books were my escape. I would just read your books and completely forget about whatever was happening in my life and going to the story. But this is the first time. And it's not one message. So I, I mentioned that one because it, it was really shocking to me because she says, I'm 16 years old. And I was like, why is a 16 year old trying, thinking about ending her life? It's like, that is just incredible. So I'm glad, but I receive other messages, exactly the same thing. Um, a guy sent me a, a message, I mean, and and um, I, have, I have a friend that helps me out with social media because I get so many messages now. So she had read the message and she said, oh, I can pass it to, to the message to him, what is it? And then the guy just said, I just wanted to say thank you because said he saved my life um, because of his books and everything. So I was in a very, very horrible place. And I started reading his whole collection from the beginning and said, <clears throat> and was by the end when, she, when he read Genesis, he said, I decided that, you know, I'm gonna try carry on and, and everything. So I think at the moment, <clears throat> I'm on about five of those messages. The people that decided to have the courage to send me a message, but there obviously probably more people and maybe they weren't suicidal, but they were feeling very down about something in their lives and then the, the, the message in the book gives them a little bit more hope. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm extremely happy of that. When I hear things like that, it's actually, it shakes me into the core that, that I've managed to, just by writing a story, you know, maybe help some people see that there are other things you can do and carry on with, with life. I na koniec zostawiłem to pytanie trudne. Czy po tej twojej stracie, którą przeżyłeś, czy myślałeś kiedykolwiek o samobójstwie? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I tried it. I, I wasn't supposed to be here. Um, and um, it's, that's the thing that I don't mind saying. So the, the poem um, that's in the book, um, I, I wrote the poem and, and tried to end my life. Uh, I wanted that poem to be the last thing I ever wrote uh, in my life. And I was like, this is it. So I wrote it for, for, for my partner and just left it on the bed and tried it. Um, it unfortunately, it didn't work out. <laughs> Woke up like 18 hours later. So like, it, was, it was horrible. It was very, very bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I tried it. Um, I, I lost hope. I lost everything, you know, she, uh, my partner was everything to me. I mean, I don't, I don't have a family anymore. So, so, she, so she was everything I had. Um, so when I lost her, I, I didn't see the point anymore. I was like, what am I doing here? It's like, I'm already, you know, professionally, I had already got to number one um, in Germany, in, in the UK. I was like, I already reached the top of my profession. I was like, I've, you know, for the outside, there's nothing else. I'm not looking for anything. It's like, I'm just wasting space now. And I'm getting older and older and older. And I was like, I really uh, believe, I mean, there's other experiences in my life as well that led to that. But yeah, unfortunately I did. Unfortunately, I, I got to a point that I couldn't, I just didn't want to be here anymore. So, but I'm still here, <laughs> so here I am. <laughs>